Hi, I'd like to show you an example of how to use Darcy's Law to calculate uh, saturated water flow through a vertical soil column. So in this case, we have a vertical soil column like the one shown here. You can see that on top of the soil column there is water ponded. So we have 10 centimeters of water ponded on top of the soil. The hatches here indicate the soil surface and this solid line is the free water surface at atmospheric pressure as indicated by the upside down triangle. This soil column is 50 centimeters in length and it's draining into another reservoir of water here also at atmospheric pressure and this reservoir is draining out into a collection basin uh, that allows us to measure the flow. Now the question here is to determine the flow rate through the column for this particular situation. We'll be using Darcy's Law and as you remember Darcy's Law says that the flux through the column Q is equal to the saturated hydraulic conductivity K times the hydraulic gradient which we can write as change in soil water potential through the column divided by the length of the column. So the uh, procedure here is two, two steps. Uh, the first step we have to find the difference in soil water potential across the column where delta psi t here represents the total soil water potential difference across the column. And then once we have that, then we'll be able to use that information to calculate the flux Q. In this problem, as in uh, most soil water flow problems, I recommend that you make a table to calculate the difference in soil water potential. We can have a gravitational potential component and a pressure potential component and we add those together to get the total potential. Here we're uh, neglecting any effect of osmotic potential. Let's call the top of the soil column, we'll call that point A, that'll be the top, and here at the bottom we'll call this point B. Okay, so we want to make our table, we want to find out these uh, potentials at points A and B. Now before we can specify the gravitational potential, we have to set a reference elevation. And for convenience, we can set the reference elevation at the same height as point B. So if that's our reference elevation, then for point B, we have a gravitational potential of zero by definition. And point A here is 50 centimeters above our reference, so it has a gravitational potential of 50 centimeters. Now we need to evaluate pressure potential. If we look at point A we can see that there are uh, 10 centimeters of water ponded above point A so we have a positive pressure of 10 centimeters. Now what about point B? We have to be a little careful here because we might think oh B is uh, has water ponded 60 centimeters above it so we might think the pressure would be 60, but that's not true because there's a decrease in uh, that pressure as it goes through the soil column. So actually this free water surface at the same elevation as B shows us that the pressure potential at B has to be zero centimeters. If it were any higher than that, then that water will build up and spill over the drain here. So we know by this free water surface that the pressure potential at B also has to be zero centimeters. Now we add these up and we can see a total water potential at A of 60 and a total potential at B of zero. So then our difference in soil water potential across the column is 60 centimeters. Now this column has a hydraulic conductivity of 10 centimeters per hour. So with this information, we're ready to calculate the flux. Q 
equals 10 centimeters per hour and our delta psi t in this case 60 centimeters and the length of our soil column is 50 centimeters. So we can just plug those uh, into our calculator or do the math in our head and we can find that the flux is in this case 12 centimeters per hour. We'll report it with two significant figures here uh, because we've specified our conductivity as having two significant figures uh, shown by this uh, period here and we'll assume these measurements are uh, two significant figures as well. So we get a flux of 12 centimeters per hour and that's how you use Darcy's Law to calculate water flow uh, through a vertical uh, saturated soil column.